I've had a few queries about R&D tax relief and the impact of the government financial support during the coronavirus outbreak. So in this episode, I'll cover uh, the implications of uh, these financial measures and R&D tax relief. Let's go. Welcome to the R&D Tax Show, where we help accountants, tax advisors, and their clients claim R&D tax relief. I'm Tessin, the founder of GrowthPad. It's important to understand uh, the implications of receiving financial aid during the COVID-19 outbreak, as these financial measures can have an impact on the companies uh, claiming uh, R&D tax relief under the SME scheme. We'll first cover state aid, so there's two types of R&D tax relief, SME scheme and RDX scheme. The SME scheme is more uh, generous um, as claimants can recoup approximately 25% of its costs, whereas under the RDX scheme, a company uh, can claim approximately 10.5% of its costs. As the SME scheme is very generous, the EU treats it as notified state aid under EU competition rules. Now, why does this matter? Well, if a claimant receives another form of notified state aid for a project, then the claimant cannot claim under the SME R&D uh, tax scheme for the same project. In short, only one notified state aid can be claimed per project. So if a company does receive notified state aid, it can still claim R&D tax relief, but it will instead be within the less generous RDEX scheme. As a result of the coronavirus outbreak, the government has provided financial support to companies. The following types of support are treated as notified state aid. A coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, so C-bills for short, bounce back loan scheme, Small Business Grants Fund, Retail, Hospitality and Leisure Grant Fund. Just for clarity, um, I have received more inquiries into grants and loans from Innovate UK. Uh, these are generally notified state aid. Uh, and one more thing, uh, the Future Fund is a support uh, mechanism where the government offers loans that convert into equity uh, and the company has to match uh, that funding using its own uh, however it wants to match it, uh, that type of funding has no effect on R&D tax relief. If you do plan to receive notified state aid, uh, to reduce the impact on R&D tax relief, the amounts received uh, should not be spent on qualifying R&D costs, such as staff involved with R&D, uh, materials used in R&D generally just for creating prototypes, uh, software, uh, usually subscription costs, uh, cost for subcontractors that can be used for development or testing uh, or utilities. Instead, the notified state aid should be used on non R&D costs such as uh, rent and rates, uh, staff excluded from R&D, uh, production costs, uh, purchase of capital such as computers, equipment, uh, machinery, uh, insurance, cleaning professional services such as accountancy fees and and legal fees, uh, advertising and marketing. Uh, generally, the coronavirus financial support is provided to businesses for uh, production purposes and not for R&D. Uh, in the application process, it is sensible to identify the non r costs that you intend to pay, that you intend to pay for using the financial assistance. Uh, once you have received the notified state aid, it's important to develop uh, and maintain an audit trail on money spent. If possible, create a separate bank account uh, to hold uh, the notified state aid monies too and pay your non r and costs from this account. This would be beneficial uh, should HMR HMRC come back with any questions. So in addition to the availability of notified state aid, the minimus aid can also be received uh, to provide assistance uh, to businesses. Uh, both the bounce back loan and the small business grants fund uh, may, be, may be de minimis aid. So de minimis aid uh, cannot exceed uh, 200,000 euros over three years for a project. 
you have to aggregate all the types of de minimis aid uh, from different sources to, to establish whether the 200,000 uh, 200, euro limit has been exceeded. Any de minimis aid used for an RD project can only be claimed uh, under the RDEC scheme. Um, however, of any of the company's own funds incurred on that same R&D project, uh, those costs can still be claimed under the SME scheme. So on the, on the de minimis aid used for R&D costs, these costs can only be claimed under the RDEC. Uh, the company's own costs for the same project can be claimed under the SME scheme. So when you're applying for these grants, you should um, request uh, details from your fund provider uh, and ask them whether you're receiving notified state aid or de minimis aid, they'll be able to easily tell you. Now, I'm going to have to mention that uh, word that we've uh, all heard a lot of over the last, uh, last few months, which is furlough. So if you have furloughed uh, some of your staff, then obviously they have not been working during that period they've been furloughed. So as they've not been working during that period, you can't claim uh, their staff cost on R&D tax. Uh, this won't affect claims now, but later on what it will mean is less money has been invested on staff during that period, so you will get less amounts back. Uh, and the final thing on tax arrears, if, uh, if, if you owe HMRC, HMRC any money, uh, pay as you earn or NIC or VAT, then any R&D tax relief uh, you receive might be offset against that. Uh, that will also include any uh, time to pay arrangements, which have been quite uh, popular over the last few months since the outbreak started. However, any VAT deferred using the VAT deferral scheme, uh, which was introduced back in March 2020, uh, this will not have an impact on any R&D tax refunds or tax credits. From an R&D tax perspective, it's more beneficial to fall into the SME scheme. But, however, from like a commercial perspective, Receiving grants and loans which are notified state aid uh, could, be, uh, could outweigh the benefits of receiving the R&D tax relief. Uh, for example, let's say if a company receives uh, R&D tax relief of £60,000 uh, a year for three years, the total benefits over the three years is going to be £180,000. However, if you claim a grant of £150,000, that's notified state aid, and then you receive £20,000 per year, year over those three years, then the total benefit is going to be 210,000. What I want to establish is each company scenario is different. If you want to discuss how any of the, any of the financial aid will affect your R&D claim, just get in touch and take care. Bye.